I just got the new Prusa MK4 as a second 3D printer to pair with my MK3. The MK4 can print about 20% faster, which stands to increase further with the release of input shaping eventually, so the added 3D printer more than doubles my output. This has emboldened me to print larger, more complicated projects. The first thing I wanted to make using this dual printer setup is a mechanism based on a round bank vault door to serve as a door for a 3D printed box. Bank vault doors can be either rectangular or circular, but for this project I chose to make a round door because I'm learning to 3D print gears using Fusion 360 and the round design lends itself to larger gears which are easier to print because they have bigger teeth. Uh, it may create a rectangular door in the future, but we'll see. Round vault doors have a series of cylinders forming a ring around the circumference of the door. When the door is locked, the cylinders extend from the perimeter and, and into holes in the door jamb. This creates a seal that's far stronger than what you get from a hinge door with a lock. When the cylinders are engaged, there's really no way to break through the door other than picking the lock. Each cylinder is controlled by a small, dedicated gear which is moved by a much larger central gear. As the central gear rotates, all of the smaller gears are engaged simultaneously which extends all of the cylinders at the same time. I wanted to take the mechanics of a vault door and shrink it down to a 3D printable design which not only functions like a vault door, but looks cool. And this is a result. Twisting the handle engages a central gear which spins 10 smaller gears. These smaller gears then engage 10 racks which each have a metal dowel embedded. The dowels extend out of holes in the side of the frame and into holes in the door jamb to create the lock. Twisting the handle the other way retracts the metal dowel so you can open the door. I had to 3D print 40 parts, all designed in Fusion 360, and assembled it with 17 metal dowels and a bearing, all stuff that I ordered on Amazon. Utilizing both 3D printers, I was able to print all 40 parts in less than 24 hours, um, but I think with some streamlining, I could get that under 18. I used the MK4 with a 6mm nozzle to print the box itself, the main box of the body took about 14 hours, which is by far the biggest part of this entire project and is sort of a limiting factor of how I planned out all of the prints. Uh, while the box is printing, I used my good old MK3 to print the smaller parts using a 4mm nozzle. Assembly took several hours and was split into three phases separated by six to eight hours to allow glue to cure. Uh, the whole thing could have been assembled at once using super glue, but uh, the more complicated connections require precise alignments, which is almost impossible with super glue because it cures really quickly and if you get anything wrong, you're going to start gluing gears to the frame and ruin the whole thing. Because of this, I used JB Weld, which is a two-part epoxy that you mix together and uh, can delicately apply to your pieces before precisely putting them together gives you a little bit of flexibility so if you miss the alignment the first time uh, it's not just gonna hold everything in place uh, you can actually move it around and allow it to get in the right spot and set uh, after you get everything aligned um, you can use clamps to clamp it all down and as long as you're patient and come back the next morning everything will have a really good seal I used a series of gears to transfer rotation from the handle, located in the center, to the larger central gear. This is an evolution of the original design, which only had three gears, but the two additional gears make the movement much tighter. The gears are held down by a small frame, which is held in place by JB Weld. He had another eight hour wait that could have been avoided if I had allowed glue surfaces for super glue. The box itself is printed in seven pieces. The main body of the box is one. The top of the box is two, inside shelf is three, and then there are four legs. Assembly of the box is pretty simple, but it requires JB Weld yet again. The top of the box has an opening for the door and the connection for the hinge, which is a simple butt hinge, using two metal dowels as a pivot point. I did a few test prints to find the correct diameter of the plastic holes in order to embed the dowel securely without the plastic breaking or the dowel coming loose over time. Overall, I'm thrilled with how this came out. This is my second project using Fusion 360, and I'm surprised how intuitive the spur gear and the rack plugins are. The rack plugin was $20, but it seems to be worth the price. It worked very well. 
This box looks great, but there is a big flaw in how to use it. Um, if you open the door with nothing in it, the entire thing tips over. Obviously that's not ideal and it's mitigated by just putting stuff in the box, but it's worth mentioning. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, 